Turning into solar, I spoke to Steve Chadima, who is the VP of External Affairs at Centec America, for Centec's perspective on the U.S. policy. Welcome. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. So Centec, uh, one of the world's largest solar companies, and definitely the largest in crystalline PV manufacturing, is now in America. It established the office in 2008, right, and headquartered right here in San Francisco. Yes. But I understand the entity, Centec America, was formed back in 2006. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Yeah. So we've had people working in uh, in different locations around the United States, but in terms of establishing a headquarters operation, we did that last year here in San Francisco. And in fact, we just moved from our temporary offices a couple of months ago to our permanent offices here just not very far from this uh, convention so that's great yeah so what was um, what was behind the decision to uh, to enter the US back in 2006 when the political environment was should I say not as favorable back then and yeah. what is the outlook today and what's what's driving what are the factors driving this outlook I think that the, the biggest motivation coming to the US was believing that there is a market here um, people at Suntec uh, uh, in Wuxi um, were had the, the foresight to see that there was the potential here. You know, the political situation back then uh, is always just temporary. You know, politicians come and go, but when it, it comes to energy, we need more energy, we need cleaner energy, and um, Dr. Xi, our founder, is uh, very much of a believer that uh, solar can play an integral part in, uh, in clean energy and the energy future, and so having it here uh, in the U.S. as a key part of a global, uh, global effort Mm -hmm. was was critical so and I think uh, you know it's proven to be a very uh, uh, very f uh, foresightful uh, decision because the US market is of course growing and where we thought it would go is where in fact it is going which is moving from uh, individual installations on homes and businesses now to utility scale installations which is really where we can have a big impact because of the volumes required for utility scale and the volume production capacity that we have so what specifically as a a PV manufacturer are you looking at in terms of the public policy um, from federal level and state level that you're working under? Well, I think the federal level is fairly well um, well uh, established at this point. We have the, uh, the investment tax credit and other uh, federal tax-based incentives and last year as part of the federal stimulus package uh, provision was made to allow those companies that don't have enough tax liability to take advantage of the tax credit to actually get uh, a grant, a direct grant from the Treasury Department. And earlier this week, the uh, Treasury Department issued its, uh, its regulations in that program. And I think you'll see uh, that part of the program start to move projects as well. And then the other part that still remains is the, uh, the Department of Energy has the authority to uh, to do loan guarantees, mm -hmm. and there's six billion U.S. dollars set aside for loan guarantee programs, which would equate to about 60 billion dollars in loans to uh, to both uh, large-scale solar production and also manufacturing facilities. Mm -hmm. So I think those two pieces will be in place fairly quickly, and I mm -hmm. think you'll see a lot of uh, a lot of projects moving forward there. So on the federal level, things are fairly well taken care of. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's always work to be done, but I think that you know the piece of, those pieces of the puzzle are there. And then at the state level is really the, uh, the, the case where we have to go state by state and try yeah. to create opportunities. Um, there is uh, the major driver at the state level are the renewable portfolio standards that the states have established. And 35 states actually have um, fairly aggressive uh, RPSs, as they're called. And uh, even though the federal government is thinking about having a national RPS, the, the level at which they're thinking of setting it is lower than all these other states. So really the states, are, it, it's only going to help in a few instances where there isn't an RPS. The states are really where it's happening. And so you've got big states like California and Texas and other states that have um, pretty substantial renewable portfolio standards and they're uh, helping to drive the market, uh, particularly since solar is, um, it's easy, it's now ex inexpensive enough to be able to compete on price and um, it's also uh, able to 
uh, be put into the ground very quickly, where some of these other technologies are, take a lot of time, a lot of permitting, um, and involve in some cases water and other things that are also scarce resources in places that there's a lot of sunshine. So, mm -hmm. uh, so PV just turns out to be a, a great solution for uh, for establishing or for meeting those uh, the renewable portfolio standards. Mm -hmm. America has been lagging behind Europe, which has had stronger incentives from the from the government, especially in Germany, for example. As the policy environment is is embracing solar, I suppose that uh, uh, the governments on the state level and federal level are somewhat modeling the European policies. But at the same time, uh, because we have a different, you know, different we are in a different country, different yeah. culture, different mentality, <clears throat> uh, somewhere it probably diverges. Could you elaborate on what the policymakers are um, adopting and where they are um, varying their approach? Yeah, that's a very good question. I think the um, uh, because we have both national and state level um, uh, entities that are making decisions, and even in some cases local entities. Because uh, a good example here in California, the single largest, I mean, one of the largest utilities in California is the Los Angeles Department of Water and Power. So it's a huge utility. It serves the biggest city in the state, and it's um, it's its own animal you know mm -hmm. it isn't controlled by the Public Utilities Commission or the mm -hmm. legislature so you have you have different groups that have to be involved uh, so it's not quite as easy as in Europe but I think that um, some great lessons can be learned from Europe particularly in making things easy mm -hmm. I think that's uh, one of the critical aspects about uh, for example the German feed-in tariff law yeah. where you know the application forms are extremely simple uh, the, you're guaranteed the payments uh, when you interconnect so things there are very very straightforward I think some aspects of that that probably won't sit so well here in the U.S. because uh, uh, in particular we have a much more market-oriented right. approach. Mm -hmm. So trying to figure out different ways to actually set the prices, um, and, but thinking about that differently from the other things. And so, uh, so I think you know, developing the right policies that incentivize uh, is a big challenge uh, because we are so cost-conscious here, but, uh, but I think that, uh, that uh, there are a lot of lessons to be learned and I think, uh, you know, but it's knocking them off one by one one state at a time, one jurisdiction at a time. That's the challenge here in the U.S. Right, so in the U.S., California is leading the way. Um, do you consider California's policy, uh, policies, approaches um, are a good model for the rest of the country, for the other states? Yeah. I think so. I think in many ways they are. Um, there are plenty of things we could do better in California, but, uh, but I think in general, um, there are a couple of aspects of it that I think are, are uh, good models for the rest of the, the country. One is that uh, is a recognition that different incentives are needed for different parts of the market. So when you're talking about very small residential systems versus very large commercial systems versus things that are at the utility level, the same policy really doesn't work well for everybody. You need to have something that's tailored to each particular group in order to make that policy work effectively. Mm -hmm. um, but the other aspect of the California system that works very well is the is letting the market set the pace. So as prices come down, incentives are used up and then they ratchet down to a lower incentive automatically. You don't have to wait till the end of the year, or you don't have to convene some decision-making group. It just happens automatically because the system was structured to do it that way. Um, so there are certain aspects about that that I think are good role models for the rest of the country. But I think there are other states too that have, uh, have good policies in place. Um, Arizona is another good example of one where they've got some terrific policies in place that are very effective in promoting solar. Uh, and of course, you would hope Arizona would be because it's very sunny there. But um, so I think that you'll see states again uh, adopt policies that you know maybe they'll take a cue from California, mm -hmm. but they may not adopt it exactly word for word. They'll take uh, you know they'll they'll sort of make it, they'll twist it to their own their own particular needs.